Now we're in the summer months. And the summer months are a little bit fucking quieter. But if you be an eagle, and eagles don't drink coffee, by the way, but if you be an eagle and you wait, it will come. If you wait, it will come. <laughs> What's up, bro? To all the less masculine dudes out there, what's up, buttercups? How you doing, babe? Let's get straight into the show. Uh, highlights from a Tim Grittani webinar just the other day talking about buy the rumor, sell the news. He really explains it well, so I'll put it in there. That was pretty much the highlight from yesterday's webinar. We also have Michael Good. There's me and Michael Good right there, just fucking hanging out in Italy. And uh, he talks about Dries and the situation, and he makes the prediction that Dries is going to spike. It's currently the most heavily shorted stock in the market, so I advise you to enjoy and watch. Lastly, I just want to say, stick the fuck in there, especially through the quieter months, because honestly, this past year, from when I started to now, like the only thing I can compare it to is the fucking boy from the sixth sense. It's like... I see fucking dead people, but instead of seeing dead people, I just see dead good trades. And that's why I'm green through out of fall. Had a little bit of problem cutting a loss on dries, but nobody's fucking perfect. Getting better and better. Right now, I am in DVAX. Uh, I'm in from about the 1830s. It was taking around 19. So I'm green through out of fall. That probably much confirms that I'll sell into the gap, but I'll leave it at that. Enjoy the fucking lessons. Live the dream. I just want to kiss you. I just want to kiss you. I'll see you later. Good challenge webinar. It's from the 4th of August. So I think that's Thursday or Friday. And I've been very interested in DIYS lately. And he's going long where a lot of people are going short. So this immediately caught my eye when I was catching up on the webinar. And uh, he's a cool guy. Very technical. Like I was with him in Italy and Positano and we started talking about ZN I think. And I was like, I didn't want to say what I was like, Michael, I was like, don't fucking understand what you're talking about. Because <laughs> he, he goes into so much detail and I need to watch his read SEC filings. But this is cool to watch for now. It's the latest update on DIYS and it's and it's basically its financial situation with its uh, issuing of shares. I think more so than anyone else that will give webinars here, I... Like, well, no, Tim Gertani does a lot of this with the uh, looking at ATMs uh, and offerings and whatnot. I want to buy when there's in or when there's uh, increasing. It's, uh, increasing demand, but not increasing supply. Uh, and with dry ships, we've had supply of shares outstanding, increasing by about 15% a day, every day for like seven, eight months, uh, or eight, nine months. Uh, and the current Kalani toxic financing, uh, as of the end of last week, was about $41 million away from being finished. It was a $220 million thingy. Uh, the last time it had a significant spike here, uh, in just a couple days, they sold $26 million worth of shares. So assume they sold maybe $20 million worth of shares here, and another few million here and here, and then suddenly you're only $10 million or less away from the end of the financing. And of course, people are going to try to jump ahead of that, and this thing is trading uh, way below book value. So I think there's uh, a good chance we get a nice spike above two, uh, and you know maybe even to three once the filing saying that this financing has ended comes out. It all depends on the details. If if uh, George says, okay, we're not doing any more of these, 
then the stock will easily spike to three, which is why I want to be pre-positioned long. Uh, on the other hand, shorts, I like it when supply is going to be increasing, aka uh, pump and dumps are great because the pumpers, uh, the people paying for the promotion, uh, they're, otherwise there's no natural demand for the stock, and then they're constantly selling their shares into the market. Um, okay, let's go take a look. And then, of course, I'll also try to talk about uh, Zion Oil and Gas. So there you have it, DOAS. It's expected to have the last of its shed issued. And we could see it pop. You heard it here first. August 7th, and I've just watched Tim Grittani's 2-hour webinar live with the market open. Quite interesting. Uh, but one of the better lessons to come out of it was the buy the rumor, sell the news, which is pretty common and it's mentioned in spikeability, I'm pretty sure, but Tim Grittani explains it well. So I thought it's a, a good highlight to give you guys. It had this ridiculous run, like there was no obvious news out. It just had this crazy run from like a dollar twenty up to two forty going into its earnings. Cause everyone was saying like, I think everyone was thinking back to this day, back on May 10th and how they had earnings then gapped up and squeezed everybody. And like, it kind of surprised some short sellers. I actually think I took um, a pretty nasty loss this day because I was surprised by it. Um, so going into this earnings, everybody was like, oh, MTBC, like, look what happened last time. Like, they're going to put out blowout earnings. Oh, shorts better be careful, you know, like that usual dumb stuff you read on message boards. Um, so the rumor is, hey, MTBC is going to have great earnings. Like, it's going to be awesome. They're going to skyrocket. So you get this big run up of 100% just people thinking that earnings are going to be great. So one of two things is going to happen. Either the earnings suck and everybody who bought this gets absolutely killed or the earnings are good, in which case everybody already has bought expecting good earnings. There's nobody left to buy. Like the stock already doubled before anything was even announced. So like unless they put out like just groundbreaking, unbelievable numbers, like – there's really nobody left to buy this stock and it doesn't matter how good the numbers are, they're still going to be sellers. You know, the people who all bought in anticipation of earnings are going to be like, okay, there it is. There's the good earnings and then start selling their positions. So mm -hmm. sellers are going to outnumber the buyers and the stock's going to go down. So you kind of get the situation where, you know, there's overwhelming odds that no matter what numbers the company puts out, the stock's going to drop. So that, that's a buy the rumor, sell the news situation. Yeah, and another buy the rumor, sell the news situation was uh, the kind of a stocks, CNN, CNF, CNBX, I believe as well. Uh, they're all running on the cannabis, uh, on the cannabis legalization vote. And this was a uh, good six months ago, maybe. And that was also major hype, major buy the rumor, sell the news. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Here's the social channels. If you want to follow us on Snapchat, Instagram, I live trade on Instagram and I reply video replies on Snapchat because it's just a bit more personal. Uh, I am on the Tim Sykes Challenge. That's how I learn from. And also Stocks to Trade Pro with Tim Bourne. And this is how I've been getting better and better and better recently. Special thanks to Tim Bourne who has really been supporting us. Uh, I've got a brand new podcast coming out that'll be out in the next few days. I can't wait for you guys to see it. But until then, until then, guys, remember... People might say health is wealth, and health is wealth. Like, I love running health's wealth, but money makes the fucking dream come alive. So chase that money, chase that date. Let's go on a fucking double date with Benjamin fucking Franklin. Let's go on that double date. If you know what I'm saying, comment the word eagle, because you need to be an eagle to stalk the right trade down in this market. Name your favorite eagle. I am a fucking albatross. I am a fucking albatross.